even very brief separations are stressful to infants and young children. Our sympathetic nervous system kicks in and impels us to try to cope with this separation by calling for the parent, crying, getting upset, signaling that we need the parent back to be our source of security and safety and regulation. It begins to damage brain cells. Hippocampal cells will die, that's our memory center. The electrical activity in the brain is being reduced by these more prolonged separations. The other thing that's affected in the brain is the amygdala. It's the fight or flight center. So when you've got this really overactive amygdala, the ability to be able to evaluate risk, make good decisions is compromised. Not only does it affect the architecture of the brain, but long term it affects health and early death. is the foundation on which we build our exploration and our autonomy and our curiosity and the cognitive skills with which we're going to negotiate the world. It's a very fundamental system um, to protect and it's foundational to many of the child's developmental achievements. Time is very important when you're dealing with very young children because you begin to see this deterioration fairly quickly. The idea that you're going to hold a young child away from the parent for a week or two weeks or three weeks is an enormity of time for a young child. They just know that the parent is absent and that can be equivalent to the parent basically being dead or having abandoned them. One of the things we see in children reared in institutions in the first two years of life is that the attachment system goes badly awry. Ultimately, that relationship with the caregiver predicts the kind of um, interpersonal relationships that the child will have as they get older. very important if we want to prevent later very problematic outcomes for these kids. The younger the child, the more urgent it is. Recovery is certainly possible, but um, I think the prognosis for most of these children is they're not going to be okay. <laughs>